What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, and in this video we are going to talk about the apply scope function. So in the previous video we were talking about the with scope function, and just like every other video in this series we're going to use Homer, the fictional person, as our example. So let's navigate over to our project, let's create a new Kotlin file, this one we will call it apply, so we'll minimize our navigation, we'll zoom in, we can close out of width, and then we'll have our main function with Homer, and we'll just go ahead, we'll run it just to make sure that we're running the, the correct class, and so we have fictional person with Homer, he lives in Evergreen Terrace in Springfield, Oregon, 97475. The apply scope function is different from the let return in width in that it does not return the last statement. So we can do our val returned, oops, returned equals homer dot apply. And you'll notice here we have our fictional person here like that. So we can do address dot uh, state equals Illinois and then address dot zip code again just like everything else uh, 62629 we can also do some other things so we can say like gender will be male and then has Facebook can be true has Twitter uh, can be false, his occupation, he is a nuclear safety inspector, and then we'll just do print line just to say optional values have been applied. We'll also say, this one will say print line, Homer has moved to Illinois, then we can do print line Homer and then print line returned just to show what it's doing. And so we have fictional person, and so that was the first one. And then we have Homer has moved to Illinois being printed out, so we have that. And then we have the optional values have been applied. And then we have our next print line, which is Homer here. And so we have all of those values. And then you'll also notice, though, this print line for the returned value, it returns fictional person. So that is pretty powerful just because this apply scope function means that you can essentially build objects in a sort of like a builder pattern sort of a way. And that's really kind of the main times when I will use the apply scope function. I want to basically change the object itself. So in this case, changing the address, changing the gender, Facebook, Twitter, occupation, all of that. And then have the value which is returned. I don't want it to be the last statement because in this case, the last statement is irrelevant. I just want it to return whatever this you know, this is whatever the reference of this, it is going to return that. And you'll even see here, it's just saying this expression is unused. And that's because under the hood of the apply scope function, you'll see you have this. So the contract you don't have to worry about, but the block, this block of code that is executed, it executes that. And then it will return this. So it will return whatever is being or whatever the, the base object that's being applied on. So that's really it. There's not a whole lot to talk about with the apply scope function. I mean, you, you do get, uh, so like, I'm guessing Kotlin won't let me do that. Um, oh no, it actually will. So, but you, you know, you can get your null, null safety with the apply scope function as well. But again, in general, I usually use it in situations where I wish I could do like a builder pattern or something along those lines. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. 
hit the subscribe button. Still have to talk about when you might use the also scope function. And other than that, thank you so much. I will catch you in the next one.